In this video, I'm going to look at limiting reactants. So if we think about chemical reactions that involve two reactants, it's actually very common to use an excess of one of those reactants rather than using the exact amount of both. What that does is it makes sure that all of the other reactant is used up. So the reactant that's used up has got a special name. It's called the limiting reactant. And that's because once it's used up, the reaction stops. And so it's going to limit how much product can be made. So we'll use the analogy of a bike to try and get the sort of idea across. So I've written this a bit like a chemical equation. So two wheels plus a saddle go in to make a bike. Obviously there's lots of other components, but we're just focusing on these. So let's suppose we've got 10 wheels and 10 saddles, and we've got to establish which is the limiting reactant so we can tell how many bikes we can make. Now I know you already know the answer, but let's just sort of process it as if it as if we didn't know. So let's focus on the wheels first. 10 wheels, how many saddles we're gonna need? We'd need half as many. Right, we've definitely got enough saddles for the wheels. What about the other way? If we focus on the saddles, how many wheels would we need? Well, we'd need twice as many. So we've only got 10, so we haven't got enough wheels. So 10 saddles would need 20 wheels. We've only got 10. So the wheels are our limiting reactant. So once we know that, we can then say, right, the ratio will tell us how many sort of bikes we can make. So it's a two to one ratio between wheels and bikes. And so we're only gonna make five bikes. So the wheel was the limiting reactant and the saddle in this case was the one in excess. So we'll use that to help us with, with this worked example and then hopefully once you've got the idea you can try the other two yourself and then play on for the answers. So we've got a reaction between copper oxide and carbon to make copper metal. We've got 4 grams of copper oxide and 1.2 grams of carbon. We've got to identify the limiting reactant and then from that calculate the mass of copper that could be made. Now. Chemists work in moles, so the first thing we're going to do using the mass moles MR triangle is calculate the moles of each chemical. So mass over MR gives us 0.05 moles of copper oxide. And just a word of warning here, whatever you do, don't double the MR of copper oxide. The MR of copper oxide is 80. And so if we've got 4 grams, doesn't matter what number's in front in the equation, we've got that many moles. Do the same for carbon, we've got 0 0.10 moles of carbon. So we'll just do the same as we did before with the wheels and the saddles. If we've got 0 0.05 moles of copper oxide, how many moles of carbon would we need? We'd need half as many, so 0 0.025, definitely got enough carbon. Let's go the other way. If we've got 0 0.10 moles of carbon, we'd need 0 0.20 moles of copper oxide. Right, we haven't got enough of that, and so therefore that's our limiting reactant. So I've typed it up there, 0 0.10 moles of carbon needs twice as many moles of copper oxide from this ratio here, and so that's the limiting reactant. Now we know that, we can say, right, how many moles of copper can we make? Well, that's a one to one ratio, two to two is one to one, so we're going to make the same number of moles of copper, so 0.05 again, and now we can just convert that to mass. Moles times MR, 0.05 times 64 is 3.2. So hopefully that's all made sense. So if you want to have a read through this information, two questions there. Pause the video, try them, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So just as before, the first thing we're going to do is calculate the moles of each chemical. So mass moles MR triangle going to come in very handy here. So we've got 0 0.05 moles of zinc carbonate and 0 0.05 moles of HCl. 
So now we know the moles of each chemical, we'll just establish which is the limiting reactant. So that many moles of zinc carbonate from the ratio is going to need 0.1 moles of HCl. We haven't got enough, so there's our limiting reactant. We don't need to check going that way. So 0.05 moles of zinc carbonate needs 0.1 moles of HCl. We've only got 0.05, there's the limiting reactant. So now we know which is the limiting reactant, we can work out how many moles of product is possible. So 0.05 moles of HCl would give half as many moles of ZnCl2 from the ratio, and so we're going to get 0.025 moles of ZnCl2. Now we know the moles of product possible, we can convert that to grams by multiplying the moles by the MR, so 3.4 grams is the answer to that one. So here's the last one, if you want to give this a go, pause the video and then play on when you're ready. So starting with moles, the moles of the methanoic acid, mass over MR, 0.0543, and the moles of propanonol, again mass over MR, 0.05. So you can see that the propanonol is the limiting reactant just, and that's going to limit the moles of ester formed to 0.05 as well. So all we need to do now is convert those moles of ester into mass and so we multiply by the MR of 88 and we get 4.4 grams. 